Hello everybody, welcome to Learn Extra exam preparation. Today we're going to be helping our grade 12 learners with uh, preparing for number patterns. So before we start, we have um, prepared a checklist of things that you need to know so that you'll be able to tackle any questions on number patterns in exams or tests. So the first thing that you need to know is how to distinguish or find the difference between an arithmetic and a geometric series or sequence. All right? So you need to know what a geometric sequence or series is and what an arithmetic sequence or series is. You must also know how to derive and apply the formulae for the sum of an arithmetic and geometric series. In this lesson, we will not uh, learn or we will not show you how to derive the formulae, but you should be able to for exam purposes. So if you look at any textbook or get notes from your teachers, those are just giveaway marks. All you need to do is to go and learn it, and if you get it in an exam, that's an easy um, five plus minus five marks in the bag. All right, and the next point there is that you also need to know how to identify and apply the formulae for the terms of an arithmetic and geometric sequence. All right, so as you know, in tests or in exams, you will be given a formula sheet, so you need to know which is which and be able to apply them. You must also know, if you can remember back to primary school, this part was very popular where they ask you for the next term or they say give the next three terms. So uh, once you've established that this is an arithmetic sequence or this is a geometric sequence, you must then know that, okay, if it's an arithmetic sequence, it's got a common uh, difference. So I need to add a certain amount each time and use that then to get the next term or the next three terms. And if it's a geometric sequence, you know that you need to uh, multiply by a certain amount each time. So you then do that to get the next term or the next three terms. So this is still popular even in matric. And the last point there in our checklist is that you must be able to find the terms, so find the terms and the sum of a series which is given in sigma notation. Okay, that is the new thing there. You need to know what sigma notation is and what it means. All right, so now that we've, uh, we know what we need to prepare or how we need to prepare ourselves for tests and exams, let's jump into our questions here. So we've taken a question from a past paper. Question one here says, a geometric sequence has T3 or term number 3, the third term, is equal to 20. So let's highlight the important things. You're more than, you're more than welcome to do this in your, in your exams as well. So you know that the third term is equal to 20, and you know that the fourth term, or term 4, is equal to 40. Right. So let's answer the question then. 1.1. You need to determine the common ratio. Okay? Now, you shouldn't be surprised that they're asking us for the common ratio and not the common difference. Why? Because it's a geometric sequence. So it means that you are you're multiplying by a constant amount each time to get the next term. Right, so let's answer 1.1 then. Okay, let's use a different color. How about orange? Okay, 1.1. One. We know that since it's a geometric sequence, if I take the fourth term, and I divide it by the third term, that'll give me my ratio, all right? So my fourth term, or my term four, is 40, and my third term is 20, all right? And 40 divided by 20 is simply equal to two, right? So this here, ladies and gentlemen, is my ratio. Okay, so my ratio is T4 divided by T3, which is equal to 40 divided by 20, which is equal to 2. So this means that in this sequence, I'm multiplying by 2 each time. One mark. Let's look at 1.2. We now need to find the formula for Tn. So they're asking us for the general term here. All right, 
if you look at your formula sheet, we know that the general term of a geometric sequence is Tn is equal to A, which is the first term, multiplied by R, which is the ratio, and this is raised to the power of n minus 1, where n is the position of the term in the sequence. So what we need to worry ourselves about is finding the value of A and the value of R. Okay, we know what R is, it's equal to 2. Okay, so I need to know, I need to work out what A is in order to answer this question. Right, what, what we can do is we can use any of the two terms. We know we can use the third term because we've, got, we've given information about the third term. we also given information about the fourth term. So you pick any one of those and you substitute that information into this formula to work out this unknown A. Right, so let's go with the third term. Why not? All right, so term three, so instead of T3, I can just write 20. So this means that 20 is equal to A, which is what I do not know, multiplied by R, which is 2, okay? N is the position. So what is the position of this 20? It's in the third position. So it's 2 to the power of 3 minus 1. Right, as you can see there, that's a beautiful equation. The only unknown is A. So let's simplify this um, next to the A. So 20 is equal to 3 minus 1 is 2. So this is 2 to, two, two, two to the power of 2. I beg your pardon. So it's 2 to the 2, right? So this means that 20 is equal to 4A. 2 squared is 4. Right? And that's a simple linear equation. I divide by 4 on both sides. So this means that my A is equal to 5. So what is my general term then? To answer the question asked in 1.2, we can say that Tn, or the general term of this geometric sequence, will be 5. And my R is 2 to the n minus 1. And that's my answer. Right, so that's the end of that question. So that's three marks in the bag. Right, let's look at the next question. What else do they ask me? Question 2, also taken from a past paper. Now we're getting slightly more complicated. Now they're introducing x's. Now that should not scare you. Whatever you apply when you're given real values of numbers you apply here in this in, in, the, in this in this in this case as well nothing has changed so don't let variables scare you so we are given this geometric sequence so let's underline that again it's a geometric sequence you must bear that in mind as you answer the question geometric so you should be thinking constant ratio so you should be thinking T2 divided by T1 is equal to T3 divided by T2, etc. Right. So they want the possible values. Note that this value is in the this this word is in the plural form. So there might be more than one value here. Right. So determine the possible values of this X. Right. As we said, it's a geometric sequence, so it means that T2 divided by T1 is equal to T3 divided by T2. Again, we can create an equation there with one unknown, that unknown being x, hopefully, and solve for x. Right, so what is my T2? What is my second term in this progression, sorry, in this sequence? So my T2 is x. So this means that x divided by T1, which is 7, is equal to the third term, T3, which is 63, divided by T2, which is x. Right, so there's an equation I need to solve for x. We can cross multiply, or you can multiply by a lowest common denominator of 7x, whatever is easier to you. So let's cross multiply. So x times x is x squared, which is equal to 63 times 7. 63 
times 7. So this means that x squared is equal to, that will be 441. And this is a geometric, sorry, a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation. And as you know, with quadratic equations, the first thing you need to do is to make the equation equal to 0. That's one way of doing it. You can make the, f the equation equal to 0 and then factorize. Or you can find the square root of both sides, okay, but then take the positive and the negative. All right, so if I make this equation equal to 0, it means that x squared minus 441 is equal to 0. Okay, if I factorize the left-hand side, difference of squares from grade 9, I need two brackets. Okay, if you're not sure about this, you can always check this 441 in your calculator and we'll see that it is a perfect square. It is a perfect square of 21. So square root of x squared is x and x. Square root of 441 is 21. Okay, and then I just need a plus and a minus. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a quadratic equation. So this means that the first part, the first bracket, x plus 21 is equal to 0, or x minus 21 is equal to 0. Bear in mind that if you have two things multiplied by each other and they give you an answer of 0, it means that either the first thing is equal to 0 or the second thing is equal to 0. That's, that's the logic behind this. Right, so here's a simple linear equation. If x plus 21 is equal to 0, you take the 21 over, so it means that x is equal to negative 21, or x is equal to positive 21. So those are the two possible values of x. Right, so that's been answered. Let's move on to the next question. Question 3. Given the arithmetic sequence, again, we, we're using algebra here. So we've got unknowns. We've got a W, all right? But again, we don't let that scare us. We know that whatever rules we apply to an arithmetic sequence, whether it's got unknowns or not, will still apply in this case, in all cases. All right, so it's an arithmetic. So let's underline that. That's important. There's pink. Let's give pink a chance. So it's an arithmetic sequence. And what do we know? We know that if I want to get the next term in the sequence, I need to add a constant amount each time. Right. So it's an arithmetic sequence, and these are the three terms. The first term is w minus 3. Second term is 2w minus 4, etc. They want to know the value of w. Right. We can apply that strategy applied um, in, in, the in the previous question to work out that value of x, except that that was a geometric, this one is an arithmetic. I know that if I take t term 2, subtract term 1, I'll get the same answer as when I take term 3, subtract term 2. Right, so this means that, okay, so we're answering question 1, I beg your pardon, so it means that 2w minus 4, take away w minus 3. Very importantly, guys, is that this w minus 3 has to be in a bracket. Why? Because the minus outside will change all the signs of the terms in the bracket. Minuses are very tricky, okay? So you must be very careful that you put your terms in brackets. You can even put this one around the brackets if you want to. Not that it will make a difference, but um, it might just make the, 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 the sum clearer to you. It might make it look clear that you're actually subtracting the first term from the second term. So that's, that's allowed. So I know that the difference between these two terms is equal to the difference between the third term minus the second term. What is the third term? 23 minus w minus, let's put that in a bracket, it's not necessary, but it might make it look, 
easier, or well, clearer, I mean, minus the second term, 2w minus 4. And again, if you're, not clear, if you're not sure where this comes from, let me write it there above for you. This is term 2. We're taking away term 1. Whatever the answer is will be equal to term 3 take away term 2. Right, so now it's just a matter of simplifying. It's a very easy um, equation, linear equation. Right, so that first bracket can fall away now because I'm substituting, or not substituting, I'm distributing a positive 1. So this means a 2w minus 4. Now here is the use um, of, of, of the second bracket because there's an invisible negative 1 in this. So negative 1 times w is minus w. Negative 1 times negative 3 becomes a positive. This becomes a positive 3. Right? Equals. Distribute that positive 1, that bracket can fall away. There is an invisible 1 outside the second brackets on the right-hand side of my equation. So this will become 2w. Again, not a minus, but plus 4. Right? So let's add like terms on the left-hand side. 2w minus w is w. Minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1. Equals um, 23 plus 4 is 27. Minus w minus 2w is minus 3w. Okay. Right, I'm going to bring my w's to the left hand side of my equation and my constants to the right hand side. So that means w plus 3w will give me 4w. Bear in mind that this negative 3 becomes a positive if you take it over. So it's w plus 3w, which is 4w. And this negative 1, if you take it over to the right-hand side, will become a plus 1. So it's 27 plus 1, which is 28. Right, divide by 4, divide by 4. That's a very easy um, linear equation. So this means that w is equal to 28 divided by 4 is 7. So that is the value of w. Right, so let's answer 3.2. Let's scroll up a bit just to see what the question was. Now they say write down the common difference of the sequence, okay? Now that is very easy to, to, to calculate. As you can see, it's just for one mark. We now know the exact values of each of the terms in the sequence. Right, so if w is equal to 7, it means that my first term, my t1, is 7 minus 3. All right, let me just write this out for you. So w, remember the terms are w minus 3, uh, 2w, minus 4, and 23 minus w. So I know what w is now. It's equal to 7. So the first term will be 7 minus 3, which is 4. Second term will be 2w, so it's 2 times 7, which is 14, minus 4 is 10. The third term will be 23 minus 7, which is 16. Right, so the common difference means what am I adding each time? If you look at the first two, you can see that 10 minus 4, so that's 6. 16 minus 10 is 6. So therefore, my common difference is equal to 6, one mark. Right, so that's question 3 done. Right, so let's look at the last um, question of this first part of our session. Question four. They give you an arithmetic sequence. Again, let's underline the important words there. It's an arithmetic sequence, okay, which means we are adding a constant amount each time, and it's 4, 10, 
16, and I hope that you can pick up what the, co the, 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 the common difference is. In other words, what are we adding each time? As you can see, we are adding 6 each time, aren't we? All right, so I know that my D is 6 just by looking at it. So they say this is the sequence of first differences of a quadratic sequence. Okay, let's underline a lot of important information there. And look at the mark allocation. So this one might require you to think uh, a bit harder. All right. But it's not impossible. So it is the sequence of first differences, okay, of a quadratic sequence. Now remember, a quadratic sequence has first differences and second differences, meaning that in order to get that common difference in each sequence, you need to, 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 to subtract um, twice. But I'll, I'll show you just now what I mean. All right, and they say the first term, first term is equal to 3. Right, so let's, let's break this down. Let's make sense of it. So 4, 10, 16 is a sequence of first differences. So it means that if you take, okay, from the original sequence, okay, let's say this is the original sequence. That's the first term of the original sequence in the box. I'm going to draw four boxes, okay? Right, this will be term one, term two, term three, term four. We don't know what it is yet. But we know that the first differences are four 10 and 16, meaning if I take this term, let's use, a, let's use pink, this term minus this term, I will get an answer of 4. Yes? And if I take the third term, take away the second term, I will get an answer of 10. Right? And if I take the fourth term, which we do not know, take away the third term, I will get an answer of 16. These are my first differences. But it's a quadratic sequence. So it means that in order to get that constant difference, I need to subtract again. So take the first differences and subtract them again until to, in order to get that constant difference. Right. So if I take that minus that, what is my, my, my constant, my difference is going to be 6, right? And as you can see, that minus that, 16 minus 10, is also 6, right? So this is definitely, whatever needs to go in the green boxes, definitely forms part of a, uh, a, a quadratic sequence. They also tell us something else, folks. They say the first term of the original sequence is equal to 3. So I can put a 3 in the first box, let's use orange. I know that my first term is equal to 3. All right? They want, us, they want us to determine the 50th term of this quadratic sequence. Meaning, if I continue these green boxes, what will be the 50th? What, will, what number will be in the 50th box? Right. So, um, Let's, 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 let, let's put in the, the answers, that, the numbers that go in the second, third, and fourth boxes. Why not? So I know that 3 plus 4 is 7. And I know that 7 plus 10 is 17. And I know that in the fourth box, I should have 17 plus 16, which is 33. Right. So if you think back to grade 11, um, we know that this common difference, or this second difference, will always be equal to 2a. So, you know, so 2a will be equal to 6, right? And we know that 3a plus b will be equal to 4. And we know that a, a plus b, plus C will be equal to 3, right? Now, what does A, B, and C mean? Sh we should remember that the general form of a quadratic sequence is Tn 
is equal to a n squared, okay, where n is the position, plus b n, b n plus c. Right, so we need to know what a is, what b is, and what c is. Right, so let's take the first equation. 2a is equal to 6y. Am I working out the general term first or the general formula? It's because in order to work out term 50, I must have values for a, b, and c to substitute so, so that I can substitute 50. All right, so if 2a is equal to 6, it means that a will be equal to 3. Okay, I know what goes in there. I actually didn't have to do this because they tell me in the question, remember, they say the first term is equal to 3. Okay, so this is a nice way of checking, right? And we know that 3a plus b is equal to 4. I know, I know what uh, a is, so this means that 9 plus b is equal to 4. Right? Solving for b, it means that b is equal to 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So I know what b is. And the last bit, I know as a rule from grade 11 that a plus b plus c will be equal to the first term, which is 3. So a plus b plus c is equal to 3. I know what a is. It's equal to 3 as well. So that's 3. I know what b is. It's minus 5. So it's 3 minus 5. I don't know what c is. And that is equal to 3. Right, so if you solve for c, the 3s on either side will, uh, will subtract each other. So sorry, 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. So if I take the negative 5 over to the right-hand side, I'll end up with c is equal to 5. Right, so now we've got our a, b, and c, so we can find the general, the general term. So it means that tn is equal to a n squared, but my a is 3, so it's 3 n squared plus b n. My b is minus 5, so it's minus 5 n plus c, which is 5. Right, so that's my general formula. So now I can answer the question. They want me for term, they ask me for term 50, the 50th term. Term 50 is therefore equal to, oops, therefore term 50 is equal to 3 times 50 squared. Okay, let's scroll down a bit. 3 times 50 squared minus 5 times 50. Because all that n means is the position plus 5, right? And we can work that out on a calculator if you want to. Right, so 3 times 50 squared. So let's clear that. Right, so it's going to be 3 times 50 all squared minus 5 times 50 plus 5. Right, so my 50th term of this quadratic sequence is 7,255. So we have answered the question and there is our 5 marks in the bag. All right, folks, that brings us to the end of the first part of the session. And we will continue with the second part after this short ad break. Welcome back, guys. And let's now continue with um, the second part of our session, which is exam preparation of number patterns for grade 12. So that's what we're busy with if you're only joining us now. So here's a, another question here. Question 5, also from a past paper. That's where we're getting all our questions. This one, as you can see, was taken from um, a February 2014 paper. So they give us a sequence there. 
The question reads, the following sequence has the property that the sequence of numerators is arithmetic. So the numerators are arithmetic. And the sequence of denominators is geometric. So they, they've taken two types of sequences and they throw them in together to make one sequence. Right, so at the top, the numerators, there's something going on. And at the bottom, something else is going on. It's a geometric sequence. Right, so let's look at our sequence, our questions rather. 5.1. They say write down the fourth term of the sequence. Right. So as we said, our numerator is arithmetic and our denominator is geometric. So this means that, as you can see, the numerators. Let's see what happens in the numerators. We've got a 2, then followed by a negative 1, followed by a negative 4. I hope you can see that we are subtracting 3 each time there. All right. So that means that the, the numerator of the fourth term will be minus 4 minus 3, which is negative 7. And in order to work out the denominator, I need to multiply this 25 by 5. So let's make our denominator green. So 25 times 5 is 125. Where is that coming from? It's coming from these green denominators there. That's one easy mark. Let's move on to 5.2. In 5.2, they want us to find a formula for the nth term, so Tn, the general term of this. This is a very interesting question because this sequence is made up of an arithmetic sequence at the top and a, a geometric sequence at the bottom. So it means that my general term will be the general term of an arithmetic sequence, which is A plus n minus 1d multiplied by d at the top. And this will all be divided by the general term of a geometric sequence, which is a multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1. And now it's just a matter of substituting um, the values, leaving n, because remember n is the position. So my first term is 2. OK, so this is the first term of the numerators. So that'll be 2 plus, open bracket, n minus 1. My, denomin sorry, my common difference in the numerators is negative 3. So I need to multiply that by negative 3. And this is all divided by my geometric sequence, or the general term for my, for my geometric sequences. So the a, or the first term, of my geometric sequence is 1. So that will be 1 multiplied by r, which is 5 to the power of n minus 1. And now it's just a matter of simplifying that. So it's going to be 2. If I distribute this negative 3, minus 3n plus 3. OK, it's just me distributing the negative 3 into the bracket all over that we can just simplify to 5 to the power of n minus 1 because the 1 doesn't make a difference. Right. So adding like terms there, that will be 2 plus 3, which is 5, minus 3n, all over 5 to the power of n minus 1. Now that is a general term of the sequence. and. That's three easy marks. Question six. There is also a very interesting sequence that has been given to us. Zero, minus one over two, zero, a half, etc. Assume that this number pattern continues consistently. Okay. Meaning it sticks to this pattern. Right. So 6.1 says write down the value of the 191st term of the sequence. If you look at this, it's basically made up of two sequences. It is all the zeros 
And in between all the zeros, we've put in another sequence, negative 1 over 2, 1 over 2, etc. So again, it's two sequences put in together. Right. So they want the 191st term of this sequence. It's very interesting to note that all the zeros occupy the first position, the third position, the fifth position. So all the odd numbered positions are occupied by zero. And as you can see, or as you know, that 191 is an odd number. So it means that obviously in the 191st position of the sequence, which is an odd number or an odd numbered position, I will have a zero again. So the answer to 6.1 is simply zero because all the odd numbered positions have zero as the term. That's one, that's term three, that's term five, term seven, etc. All right, so the same applies to the 201st position. I'll have a zero there, as long as it's an odd number. One easy mark. 6.2. Determine the sum of the first 500 terms of the sequence. Okay, now 500 is an even number. All right? So we need to know the first 500 terms of the sequence. Okay. 500 is an even number, so it means that the 500th term will not be a zero. It will be one of these, of these fractions, which will have a denominator of two, all right? So it means that since we're only looking at the even-numbered positions, I can actually take the first 250 terms. It means that 250th term will be the 500th term of the sequence, in, in, in of the complete sequence, okay? Let me say that again. The 250th term is the 500th term of the sequence, right? Because every second, fourth, sixth, eighth term is occupied by a fraction, a number divided by two. All right, so we need the formula now of the sequence. What type of sequence is this, by the way? If you go from negative one to one, you should see that you are adding 1. In other words, negative 1 over 2 plus 2 over 2 will give me 1 over 2. It will give me this guy, right? And if I take 1 over 2 and I add another 2 over 2, I'll get 3 over 2, which is the next term, which is this one. So it's actually an arithmetic sequence, and I'm adding 1 each time. All right, so they're asking us for the sum. We know that the formula for a sum of an arithmetic sequence is Sn. This is taken directly from our formula sheet. Is equal to n divided by 2, open bracket, 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by the common difference. So the sum of the first 500 terms means we're going to look at the first 250 terms divided by 2 multiplied by 2 times the first term, which is negative a half, plus n minus 1, so that's 251, sorry, 250 minus 1, which is 249, multiplied by the difference, which we said, is 1. That's what we're adding each time. Right? And that is taken directly from the formula sheet. And we can therefore use the calculator again. Right, so let's clear that. Okay, so that's 250 divided by 2, open bracket, 2 times negative a half plus, sorry, close bracket, plus 249. Sorry, 49, not 46. 
close bracket. 249 times 1 is still 249. Right, and that is equal to 31,000. 31,000. Okay, so that means that the sum of the first 500 terms in this sequence is 31,000. We, remember, we only take 250 as our position because we're only worried about each alternate sequence in the, in the in, sorry, each alternate term in the sequence. All right, folks, that brings us to the end of the second part of our session. Uh, we're going to take a quick ad break, and after that, we'll continue with the last section. Welcome back, folks, and this is the last section of the session we revise in grade 12 number patterns. So let's jump straight to the next question, which is question seven. Right, this is a sigma notation question. Right, bear in mind what sigma notation is. All it means is that we are adding up terms in a sequence. So sigma notation gives us a series of terms. So working out the sum of a series of terms. Right, so they say, that calculate the first term of the series. So what is our series? In other words, what we're doing is we are adding um, the terms by first substituting uh, a k, which is equal to 2, and then equal to 3, and then k equal to 4, all the way to k equal to 20. All right. So just to make sense of this question, guys, before we answer it, let's just first calculate or work out the first two or the first three terms of this, just to explain what sigma notation is again. Right, so in order to get the first term of this series, we need to substitute k equal to 2. So it means that in order to get the first term, I'm just going to write the terms there. The first term will be 4x minus 1, and my k, or the first term to substitute, is 2. Okay, so that, that's as simple as that. That's my first term. My second term of the, of the sequence, or, or the series rather, would be k is equal to 3. So it means that it's 4x minus 1, and it's all to the power of 3. That's my second term. And of course, the third one will be to the power of 4, etc., etc. Okay, let's answer question 7.1. Calculate the first term of the series if x is equal to 1. Okay, as you can see from my sequence there, I know that my first term, so term 1, will be equal to 4x minus 1, all to the power of 2, but they say x is equal to 1. So if x is equal to 1, we just substitute x in there, t1 will be equal to 4 times 1, which is 4 minus 1, all to the power of 2, and that is simply equal to 3 squared, which is 9. Two marks. 7.2. They say for which values of x will the sum to infinity, take note of the sign, right? The sum to infinity exist, right? If you go to your formula sheet, they give you the formula for the sum to infinity of terms. You know that the sum to infinity of a geometric sequence or geometric series will be a, which is the first term, divided by 1 minus r. Okay? But then they say, which is part and parcel of this formula, this only applies, this is only the case if my r is bigger than negative 1 and less than 1. Right. So we need to work out what r is in this case. Right. So my r is what? What am I multiplying by each time? If you go back to our sequence there at the top, you can see that this is 4x minus 1 to the power of 2. This is 4x minus 1 to the power of 3, which means that I'm multiplying by 4x to, sorry, I'm multiplying by 4x minus 1 each time. So this means that my r is actually equal to 4x minus 1. Okay, they want to know for what values of x, for what values of x will this thing um, be uh, will it exist? All right. So instead of an r here, I'm going to put a 4x minus 1. So this means that 4x minus 1 must be greater than negative 1. 
it must be less than 1. Okay, I need to solve for x. So I'm going to add 1 so to, to this side and add 1 to this side. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0, which is less than 4x. And 1 plus 1 is 2. And I need to divide everything now by 4. So that means that x there will be greater than 0 because 0 divided by 4 is still 0. And 2 divided by 4 can be simplified to a half. So the sum to infinity will only exist if my x is between 0 and a half. And that is question 7.2 for 3 marks. Okay, moving right along to the last question, which is a bit challenging, so we need to focus a little bit more in this case. They say, in a geometric series, the sum of the first n terms is given by this. Remember, we're talking about the sum here. And the sum to infinity of the series is equal to 10. Right, 8.1, calculate the value of P. Okay, so they want to know what that guy there is. Right, in order to work out the first term, if I want to know what the first term of the sequence is, sort of the series is, I can substitute or I can replace that sum of n terms to be A, all right? Because the sum of the first term is actually equal to the first term. If you only have one number, all right, in, in, in a series and you want to work out the sum, so that sum will actually be equal to the value of the first term. Right, so in order to answer 8.1, what we're going to do is, we're going to say, Sn, okay, we're going to just going to replace it with A, okay, because that is the sum, so that is the first term. We can say A is equal to P, 1 minus a half, all right, and instead of an N, remember, the first term occupies the first position, so I can say it's to the power of 1. Okay. Right. So it means that my first term is actually equal to P. 1 minus a half is a half. This is a half. And a half to the power of 1 is still a half. So this is a P times a half. Right? So it means that my first term is actually equal to P divided by 2. All right, folks, bear in mind that they gave us that second bit of information about the sum to infinity. And we know that the formula for the sum to infinity, the sum to infinity is A divided by 1 minus R. So I'm now going to create an equation in which we can solve for P. All right, they told us what the sum to infinity is. They said it's equal to 10. So I can replace sum to infinity with 10. And I know what my a is. It is p divided by 2. And I know what my r is. It is what is raised to the power of n, which is a half. So this is 1 minus a half. Right. So if you simplify that, it means that 10 is equal to p over 2 divided by a half. Let's multiply. 10 by a half, 10 times a half is 5, so it means that 5 is equal to P over 2, and that simply means that P is equal to 5 times 2, which is 10. So my P is equal to 10. There we've answered question 8.1, calculate the value of P for 4 marks. Right, the last bit, calculate the second term of the series, and again here, we're going to use that second fact that they gave us, that second bit of information, which is the sum to infinity. Right? So we know that the sum to infinity is A divided by 1 minus R. All right? I know that my sum to infinity is 10. Okay? And... I need to work out my A, the first term, because if I have the first term, then I can get the second term by multiplying by my ratio. So it is 1 minus a half. 
So it means that 10 is equal to A over a half. Right? Multiply the 10 by a half is 5. So it means that 5 is equal to A. So the first term of the, of the series is 5. But I don't want A. I want the second term. Bear in mind that they say it's a geometric series. Okay? So if it's geometric and I want to work out term 2, I know that term 2 will be A multiplied by R to the power of 2 minus 1. Remember, it's N minus 1, so 2 minus 1, which is just 1. All right? So my term 2 is equal to 5 times my R, which is a half. So 5 multiplied by a half is simply 5 over 2. Now, that is my second term, right? And, guys, that brings us to the end of this section of exam preparation of number patterns. Thank you very much for your time, and I wish you all the best for your exam preparation. Till next time, cheers.